Hi friends, I'm Father Paul Felix, a pastor of the Church of the Annunciation. Friends, I have something important to share with you and it's kind of timely because we are uh, approaching the great celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday. And so in anticipation of that, and in light of the coronavirus, I wanna make you aware that the Holy See has provided for some plenary indulgences, uh, which are so important uh, for our life as Catholics, as disciples of Jesus Christ, and seeking our own sanctification and the aids that the Lord provides for us by the power of the keys that the Lord entrusted to Peter, of binding and loosing. And so a plenary indulgence provides means for the release of the temporal punishments due to sin uh, in a person's uh, life. And so, uh, you know, the sacrament of reconciliation provides forgiveness for the sins but there's still temporal punishments due to those sins that uh, we have to uh, make reparation for. And so if we don't do that through doing penances in our daily life, uh, if we die, even, even if we die in a, especially, really only if we die in a state of grace, um, if we haven't made satisfaction, then, then there's purgatory to go through a purification to, to clean that up, so to speak. So. But in her mercy, Holy Mother Church uh, has, uh, by the will of our Lord, the merciful will of our Lord, has provided means through indulgences to help us to mitigate those punishments um, as, as well as to have a plenary indulgence, which completely removes all of the punishments that one has incurred up to that point in one's life. And so this is a huge windfall uh, that is made available to us. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of people sort of uh, want to explain away or try to dismiss purgatory. This is a dogma of our faith. There is no doing away with purgatory, uh, the doctrine of purgatory. And uh, at the same time, we uh, want to avail ourselves to the loving help and mercy of God. Uh, we are created for communion with him and with one another. And so when we sin, we separate ourselves from God, we separate ourselves from others, and we even um, make a break within the integrity within ourselves. And uh, the Lord wants us to have life and have it to the full. So there's this beautiful opportunity, and let me read to you uh, the relevant parts from the um, decree of the Apostolic Penitentiary that's the dicastery in Rome that uh, the Holy Father uses to uh, announce these um, uh, grants of indulgences. So it's a decree from the Apostolic Penitentiary on the granting of special indulgences to the faithful in the current pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic. The plenary indulgence is granted to the faithful suffering from coronavirus who are subject to quarantine by order of the health authority in hospitals or in their own homes if with a spirit of detached uh, a spirit detached from any sin they unite spiritually through the media to the celebration of holy mass the recitation of the holy rosary to the pious practice of the way of the cross or other forms of devotion or if at least they will recite the creed, the Lord's Prayer, and a pious invocation to the Blessed Virgin Mary, offering this trial in a spirit of faith in God and charity towards their brothers and sisters, with the will to fulfill the usual conditions, which include sacramental confession of our sins, Eucharistic communion uh, that happens by attending Mass and receiving Holy Communion, and prayer according to the Holy Father's intentions as soon as possible. Healthcare workers, family members, and all those who following the example of the Good Samaritan exposing themselves to the risk of contagion, care for the sick of coronavirus, according to the words of the Divine Redeemer, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends will obtain the same gift of the plenary indulgence under the same conditions. This apostolic penitentiary also willingly grants a plenary indulgence under the same conditions on the occasion of the current world epidemic, 
also to those faithful who offer a visit to the Blessed Sacrament or Eucharistic Adoration, or reading the Holy Scriptures for at least half an hour, or the recitation of the Holy Rosary, or the pious exercise of the Way of the Cross, or the recitation of the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, to implore from God, from Almighty God, the end of the epidemic, relief for those who are afflicted, and eternal salvation for those whom the Lord has called to himself. The Church prays for those who find themselves unable to receive the sacrament of the anointing of the sick and of the viaticum. Viaticum is receiving our Holy uh, Eucharist, our Lord, uh, before death. That viaticum is really intended to be the last sacrament that a person receives before they die. And so receiving the Eucharist uh, would be the last sacrament. Entrusting each and every one to divine mercy by virtue of the communion of saints and granting a faithful, the faithful a plenary indulgence on the point of death, provided that they are duly disposed and have recited a few prayers during their lifetime. In this case, the church makes up for the three usual conditions required. For the attainment of this indulgence, the use of a crucifix or the cross is recommended. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and of the Church, heal, heal health of the sick and help of Christians, our advocate, help suffering humanity, saving us from the evil of this pandemic and obtaining for us every good necessary for our salvation and sanctification. This present decree is valid, notwithstanding any provision to the contrary. And so, friends, the Holy See has provided for us a wonderful opportunity to receive the remission of the temporal punishments for our sins, which, are, which is so important, especially in a time which there, in which there is uh, such great danger looming. And I would add... Uh, my, my own words, my own thoughts and sentiments to this it is, is let us pray for the mercy of God, especially in the case of abortion. That anyone involved in the, the attaining or procurement of an abortion would have true conversion and turn away from such a thing so as to allow the unborn to experience the merciful opportunity to have life and to have the opportunity to be baptized and to come to know God and to have the means of being in communion with the Holy Trinity in the life of grace and to aspire to sanctity of life. Let us pray for one another in this difficult time, but let us rejoice that we recognize and have received the wonderful news that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And he's shown forth the magnitude of the love of God for us and for all people. And he calls all people to communion with himself. And so let us not fall short of all the opportunities that the Lord provides for us. Let's seize upon them and help each other. So I'm asking you to spread the word with others, help others to come to know about these indulgences and take advantage of them during this time, especially as we are preparing to celebrate uh, Divine Mercy Sunday in the context of this beautiful season of Easter. I hope everyone has an image of the Divine Mercy in their homes. Um, and even if you don't have one in your home, if you have a computer or a smartphone, you can uh, do a search for it and look upon the image of the Divine Mercy and venerate it, um, understanding that the image reflects and directs us in our hearts and our souls to the one who is represented. We're not worshiping the image. We're worshiping God who made himself visible to us. He showed forth his mercy in such a wondrous way. And so with all that having been said, uh, be assured of my prayers for you and your family, all of your loved ones and friends. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Happy Easter and happy Divine Mercy Sunday.